Lucky Hank is a midlife crisis series starring Bob Odenkirk as Professor Hank Devereaux Jr., the chairman of an English department at an underfunded college who becomes increasingly unhinged, navigating the chaos of personal and academic life. Did Gracie really deserve all that teasing? Deserve? You don't still believe in deserve, do you? It's an unfair world. I'm not going to even things up with a few kind acts. Oh. No. Tenure doesn't mean you can't get smacked in the face. No, it just means I can never, ever be fired. It doesn't mean that either. Kind of feels like it. I sat down with Lucky Hank co-star Mireille Enos to discuss her role as Lily Devereaux, the wife of Hank and the vice principal of a local high school in rural Pennsylvania. As Hank's life starts to unravel, Lily begins to question the path that she's on and the choices she's made. So you tend to play a lot of dark yes, I do. roles. Yes. This seems like Lily is really a, a 180 from your normal it, shtick. It <laughs> is, and that was by design. You know, I, I've been playing these very dark girls, these very kind of like emotionless, repressed, and we, everyone went through COVID and trying to shoot season three of Hannah in the middle of COVID, I just felt this heaviness. Mm -hmm and in the world, and I thought, I, I want to tell a story that's a little bit about hope, that's about just regular people and what we think about hope, and then Lucky Hank showed up. And you were saying that uh, when Lucky Hank, when you first were reading mm -hmm. the script, that you, you fell in love with the world, but you mm -hmm. really didn't know who Lily, Lily was. was. So what drew you then to, to Lily? Well, um, you know, the first scene of the first episode, Hank is there in the classroom and he has this incredible articulate monologue to his students expressing his frustration. Professor, you barely said anything in an hour and a half. Could you please, just for once, say something? Your only novel isn't even available at your own campus bookstore. You, you're here. The fact that you're here means you show very little promise. Did that sound harsh? I'll smile through the rest of this. You are here at Railton College, mediocrity's capital. And it's so rare that actors are given that much language in TV. Usually their, their words are pretty spare. And I was reading, and Lily doesn't have a lot to do in the pilot. And in fact, I got to the end of reading that pilot, and I knew that I wanted this job, but I didn't know who Lily was yet. And talking with the writers, Aaron Zellman and Paul Lieberstein, the truth is, is they weren't sure yet either. Um, it's based on a Richard Russo novel, and the Lily in the book is pretty spare too. It's not her story, and they knew that they wanted the show to be more balanced, and for Lily to have a world of her own, but they hadn't found out really what that was yet, and so we got to discover it on our own. And the one thing that I kept saying to them was, Hank is a cynical person. There's a lot of cynicism in the English department. And it's easy to build humor around cynicism. You know, it's funny to be grumpy about things. I said, I think Lily has to be a bright spot. Maybe sometimes she's faking it. Maybe it's a crutch. But that has to be the starting point, that she's trying to reach for optimism. And then we went from there. And so as you're able to really have that carte blanche to, to create the character. Yeah. Is that exciting or is that daunting? It feels vulnerable to just play like a regular girl and mm. let yourself be alive and s potentially silly. And, um, and then you're there with Bob Odenkirk, who is so talented and comes with this incredible sketch comedy background. I find, though, once you say what's true, it's very liberating. So once I had said to him, I feel scared. <laughs> then actually, yes. like, it dissipated, and then we just got to work. Are there some similarities between you and Lily? Um, yes, there are. She's different than me. I think, I think I sometimes do that thing that wives and mothers do where, and which Lily definitely does, where we get really focused on making sure the people in our life are doing well, you know, the husband's okay, the children are okay, the house is okay, the, and we forget to ask ourselves, am I okay, what do I need? Um, and I think Lily has been doing that for a really long time. And this season of the show is about that tipping point where she starts to ask herself what she needs. Without any spoilers, yeah. uh, what can uh, viewers expect as far as this season, the development of Lily yeah. and, and the plot? 
This show actually allows characters to make brave choices and shake things up and change. And that was actually something we discovered as the season went. You know, they were looking at Lily at her high school job, and then they started thinking, maybe this isn't the only place Lily gets mm -hmm. to spend her time. What would you hope that viewers take away from Lucky Hank? I hope they feel seen. Um, I love going to see Ant-Man as much as anyone, but sometimes I want to watch a story where I recognize myself. Mm. And um, I think there's a lot of humanity in this show. And uh, yeah, I hope they laugh and I hope, I hope they feel, feel seen. Our thanks to Marae Enos for that. New episodes of Lucky Hank are available to watch on AMC and AMC+. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.